try to bring your mind to normal, say, right here at the breath. Basically aware the breath is coming in, breath is going out. You don't have to do anything fancy. Just try to be as sensitive to the breath as you can to, to figure out what really needs changing, what doesn't need changing at all, what feels good, what doesn't feel good. When the mind is really st stable and still, you can see these things. So it's a combination of staying with the breath to get the mind still and then using that still mind to be more sensitive to the breath. So you can make it even stiller. I'm trying to bring the mind to a state of normalcy right here. The word for normalcy, sila, is usually used for the precepts because these, are, these things are connected. The way you act outside is the way your mind is going to be dealing with itself. The orders that the mind gives itself to do or say or think things are the same kind of orders that it gives itself as it orders its different committee members around. So you have to be very careful as you're practicing meditation. You can't just plug meditation into any old life. You have to look at the way you live your life to make sure that your life is at normalcy too. That way your mind can be at normalcy. Otherwise, if there are things you've done to harm other people, either by telling lies, telling divisive things, speaking to hurt their feelings, whatever you might do in a way that's harmful, okay, that when you sit down to think and try to get the mind quiet, those things are going to appear in the mind. And either you push them away and deny that they happen, which isn't healthy for your meditation, or you just feel very a great deal of remorse, and that makes it difficult to get the energy up, to get the confidence up that you can do this. So this is one of the reasons why the Buddha said if you want your concentration to have strength, it has to be nourished with virtue. You look at those five precepts we took just now, they're basically a pattern for how you know what you just do not want to do, period. There are some other areas in life that the precepts don't cover. Those you ha for those you have to use your own discernment as you get more and more sensitive. But these are five guidelines that you can just take across the board. No killing, stealing, no illicit sex, no lying, no taking of intoxicants. When you set up a boundary around your behavior that way, and if it's a clear boundary, then it clears up a lot of the mess in life when you're trying to say, well, should I do this or should I do, it, do that? And if you realize, okay, doing that is going to break the precepts, okay, that's one option that's out, period. And then you have to look at the remaining options and try to make the best out of those. Because when you break a precept, it's usually to gain something. Sometimes it's simply just that you feel like doing it. Of course, when that feeling comes through the mind and you act on it, okay, then the feeling is gone, and then you're left with a karma. Other times you feel that, okay, if you, if you tell this lie, you can make some gain this way or gain that way. Well, even then, the gain doesn't last all that long, and then you're still left with a karma. So you want to remind yourself, none of these things are things you want to do ever. And that way the mind doesn't have to deal with regret when it sits down to meditate. And your mind can make this, attain this state of inner normalcy, which allows you to see things for what they really are. So that's the connection. If you're a harmless person, you see things more clearly than if you're a harmful one. Harmful people don't like to have their actions re discussed. They don't like to have their actions brought to their attention. And that means that they start closing up huge areas of their own lives. Areas where they could have learned some important lessons. So it's important that you try not to be harmful. That way there's nothing in your, in your mind to disturb you when you settle down, nothing to deny and nothing to feel regret over. And that's a big gift to yourself right there. This is why the Buddha said, when you practice the precepts, other people benefit, you benefit as well. And it creates a really important context for the practice as a whole.